Hello, community. So great that you are back. Yes, we are also back in the 1990s with this title, AI Telehealth. And you might say, oh my goodness, but no, never mind. We can talk now about how can AI generate an evolving internal differential diagnosis and do we have really a new blueprint for the human aligned AI interface, especially for the communication and the new mindset? So, Let's open up this video and remember just a week ago I told you here in this video AI can't help real people. It can pass medical exam with 95% but we are missing something significant and you're not gonna believe it. Just a week later there is here this amazing spark of innovation and here's the paper. It is here by Google Research a blog about advancing conversational diagnostic AI with multimodal reasoning. It's a very innocent looking article, yeah? But it is absolutely amazing. On 63 pages, you see how Google develops exactly the missing link, the missing piece. And what I told you just a week ago is why AI is not working in healthcare. Why is AI missing out on these human interactions? AI is good in a clinical setting, in a computer lab setting, with experts handling AI. And now Google presents us with a solution, and especially here in the domain of medicine, of telemedicine. So, 63 pages, go read it, ask all the different systems that you have AI to do a summarization, and come back and we will continue to talk about it. At first, I like the title that Google gave to this research, Amy. I think Amy is cute. But since English is my third language, I had to learn new scientific terms. Epistemic humility. I had no idea what it is, but it is seemingly the willingness to admit that we may be wrong and not know everything. And guess what? They implemented this now into an AI system. And I was, wow, I was amazed. No? And then they did a human expert evaluation going here with the clinical standard, the Objective Structural Clinical Examination, the OSCEs, and they compared here to primary care physicians, PCPs, and evaluated the behavior of the system now in multi-modal multi patient scenarios. So a complete new move here buy an AI company and say AI is not anymore in our lab, AI is not anymore on our browsers, AI is not really, we try to integrate this into a workplace. Yeah, I also tried three different AI providers, you guess who, the biggest one on the planet, and I said just summarize these 63 pages and you know what, the result was disappointing, because all three delivered completely different perspective. Hey, try it out yourself, it is a lot of fun to learn, to understand what AI picks out of 63 pages and regards as the main technological insight, as the main innovation and as the main procedural know-how, as the main new methodology implemented, you will be amazed how the AI have been trained on different data sets. And because the complexity of these 63 pages is quite challenging, I expected every AI to fail. Of course, no problem. But we are not going to fail because we are going to focus here on the core. And the core is simple. This here is Google Research Block and I'm going to show you here this simple video. You log into your iPhone and Amy is there. An intelligence, request, interpret, and reason about whatever you have. So we have an internal state and a reasoning, and the history taking its place. So you see, we have now a conversation of the user with Amy, and Amy starts to develop an internal state. Confidence in differential diagnosis, completeness of medical history taking, analyze all the information gaps that the icing is happening, and then finally building a report and addressing here the patient concerned. So it gets the older data, it asks here for image data, visual data, MRT data, chest X-ray data, whatever. And it builds up a reasoning and you see this, that the internal state becomes more and more interesting. And then it delivers a diagnosis and a management plan and comes up with follow-up questions to validate. So 
all the steps of differential diagnosis now copied into an AI as a pattern to the AI. And I think this is amazing. If you abstract it away, it's simply three phases. Now you have a history taking phase where the AI asks you the patient interactively, actively discovering knowledge gaps that the user, the human did not provide. Say, hey, maybe you can take a photo of your skin where you think this might be something we should look at now. Or do you have the latest results from your doctor, from your physical exam? What is your blood pressure? What is your whatever you have? And then it comes up here with a diagnosis and a management and follow-up questions here to generate here really a correct patient profile, answers the remaining questions. So interesting. You see, it's not the DI saying, hey, you've provided me this input data and this is the solution. Full stop. End of thinking. No. We have a complete new mindset now implemented in this AI. And this is a fact that I absolutely love in this publication. This is the first time I see it this clearly. So Amy's true innovation lies, yeah, whatever he does here in AI and multimodal interpretation and beautiful. But you know what is the core? That no AI summarization will tell you. It is really trying here to come close to this human epistemic humility recognizing the limits of its knowledge and strategically reducing the uncertainty through a dialogue with its human customer, of the human client. So we shift away from AI to understand a black box miracle, a black box oracle, maybe Medusa's whatever, you know? And we have an AI that says, hey, I have maybe not, a, not the right idea at this right moment, and the AI starts here recognizing the limit of its knowledge. It is not forced to give an answer that is wrong. It is not forced to say, hey, I don't know nothing about this topic. It is here trying to learn in the conversation with the human here what it is all about. And I think this is the right way forward. The internal state now becomes so much more interesting here. And this internal state, as I've shown you, evolves now during this consultation. So we have different differential diagnosis confidence scores that the AI calculates here based on probabilistic weights assigned to each potential diagnosis based on the current evidence before it starts to analyze here the knowledge provided, before the AI starts to identify its own knowledge gaps. So based on its parametric knowledge of its pre-training or maybe of its fine-tuning, it knows that it needs other physical and medical parameters to really come to a solid diagnosis. So it says, hey, you know what? I'm missing some data. Explicitly track the uncertainty. I would need a visual confirmation of your rash or there are some missing lab values I would need to go to the next step. You know, any I not as this machine that knows everything and has to know everything, but a machine that is really carefully trying here to come up with a differential diagnosis and tells you, hey, this is missing or this is missing. Or if you have this data, we could go the next step. So diagnostic phase context, structured progression, so history taking, hypothesis generation, and then a management planning. And this is what we were missing all along. And this iteratively state updates is simply here, the beauty where the patient responds or you upload some images or you have some documents or some other visual documents or whatever you have on additional data. So why is this so fascinating? Because suddenly the mindsets we see in AI machine changes. Now we build or we try to build AI where the uncertainty is the strategic driver in the AI reasoning. And this is completely different what we did until now. So this is the reasoning pattern. You learn those reasoning patterns and those are the reasoning patterns and there is more knowledge. And now ingest the whole internet and after you have the whole internet, go to all social media platforms and all the BS over there. And now we say stop. Nonsense. The new framework of Amy it treats uncertainty not as a limitation to overcome, but as a strategic tool to guide you the conversation with the human. So we have a proactive information gathering by the AI itself. We have a multimodal validation phase where the system says, 
hey, do you have some audio file of this? Or can you just make a picture of your injury of whatever you have? Do you have some actual ECG image, whatever? And then we have an update here of the state with a probabilistic reasoning to weigh in the new evidence against the prior knowledge. And now the beauty is that it can override its own conclusion. If we add data, the system is now able, because it is held in this state of uncertainty, it doesn't have to defend its answer, but it can evolve with new data. Those are the advantages over the traditional methods. And it's really interesting because if we go to the classical medical or CD style evaluations, diagnostic accuracy, efficient information gathering and robustness to variation, we see that Amy performs really well compared to human, and sometimes even up to the human performance and in certain cases, even surpassing here the human performance. But you know what? This kind of innovation of AI is now interesting because we can go beyond healthcare with this. Because if we have now a state of where framework like Amy shows us, we can apply this to other domains like climate modeling. I don't know some of you are out there and say, oh, that's complete nonsense. Yeah, Great. Whatever you believe, you are free to believe. But suddenly we could have an AI that is tracking the uncertainties here in those weather prediction patterns or the carbon capture simulations and is helping us to understand more because the AI itself says, hey, I have to learn more. I have some knowledge gaps. I'm interested to come to the most possible, most logical conclusion. The same in legal reasoning, in law analysis, balancing now probabilistic evidence against case law. Or in autonomous system, like managing uncertainty in the self-driving cars. This is a huge research topic here, uncertainties. And you can force an AI to narrow down the probabilistic interpretation of certain visual data. And you say, this is it, it has to be this, no? But guess what? If you are wrong, this could be really, really problematic. So if you have an AI system that says, Right from the beginning, I am in a state of uncertainty and I will do my best to learn, to self-learn, to ingest data, to ask for new data, for additional data, to validate my data, to come up with a solution I have validated from different perspectives, from different argumentations, you know. I think this is the way and this is the way Amy shows us here in this beautiful publication by Google. And I just want to tell you, hey, Publication is out there. Have a look at it. So in summary, we have here Amy as a blueprint for a human aligned AI. And I think this is the beauty. This doesn't is not just about building better diagnostic tool. Yes, of course. But it is also a roadmap for aligning AI with the human cognitive processes, especially in the high stake domains. So I think a beautiful paper. Next frontier is indeed scaling the NEI framework to domains beyond medical, like climate change or legal reasoning, where the uncertainty and the multimodal data reign supreme. I hope you enjoyed it. I see you in my next video.